Okay, so the aim of this project is to have a go at kind of getting a bit more competent with Google Earth um, and start trying to think about how we can kind of use some of this software to help map different impacts. Um, it should, should be really useful, not just for our own understanding, but also uh, as a, a skill that we can kind of take forward um, into into our projects, into our NEAs, um, and, and maybe even beyond. Okay, so um, first thing you're going to need to do is to try and get a sense of um, what these different impacts are and to complete the research table. I've sort of done the first column here. Um, really useful if you include the links so that you can kind of go back to that and we'll also copy those into Google Earth as well to keep a record of it. So here's the Philippines and you've got some of this information already. You've also got the same thing for California. Okay, so um, I won't go through that, but once you've filled that in, it's going to make your life a lot, lot easier and we can kind of focus on the skills of the Google, of Google Earth using that. Um, if you haven't already got Google Earth Pro installed on your laptop or device, you, you are going to need that. This doesn't work with the normal Google Earth um, web browser. You need Google Earth Pro. Easiest way to do that is to just um, put it into a Google search. Top link should be the same as this. Um, check, you know, check with checkers are going to work if you want to with your systems or if any issues let me know and then otherwise click on this if you're on a mac or on a window um windows pc just follow the link and it should all make sense and that's kind of a little bit there um so once you've installed it we can start um to kind of play around with mapping our different impact so you'll need to open up google earth I expect it will start in the UK. Um, so, if you could, so easiest thing, first thing you want to do is on where it says places, click on my places and click on add, create a new folder, and I'd call it hazard hotspots. Um, this will allow us to save everything we do so that you guys can work on it in the future and, and can view it and can share it. Uh, eventually what we'll do is we'll save this folder to Google Drive and then I'll have a kind of online online copy of it. Um, so once I create a new folder, I can hit that. And then whenever I need to stop kind of the, the area I'm working on, I can just go back to that folder, right click, save place as, um, this is going to do hazard hotspots. I'm going to for now just save it to my desktop. As a KMZ file is fine, or KML doesn't, doesn't make a difference for the purpose of this. Hit save, and you'll have a copy that you can open up and, and change again. If you have um, logged in to Google Earth Pro as well, I'm struggling to see how I'm doing it right now. I must already be logged in. Um, it will automatically load it for you as well. Um, I assume I must already be, be logged in on this. Normally it comes up in the top corner there. Okay, um, so once we've got our new folder, um, what we now want to do is start mapping our impact. So the first one, which we're going to have a go at doing is Mount Pinatubo, so I can just tap that into the search function. It will take me to the Philippines. And there we go, Mount Pinatubo, there's our crater. Um, you can use these tools up here to sort of see, get, get inside the crater. Um, and we set it all. So we've got the, obviously the option to zoom in and out. And um, quite a nice feature is this timeline one up here so you, you can use kind of historical um, satellite images so we can actually go back in time um, to before the eruption and we can see how it looks quite different in 1990 1991 and after the eruption and we can see kind of the debris um, all of the kind of ash that's been uh, ejected from it and then if we go back back to kind of today and let's turn this off again we can see how the vegetation is now colonized and kind of um, it's the ecosystems um, developed again but 
they still with some of those remains of these kind of uh, lighter areas showing the kind of sediment, the, the ash and the fine sediment um, from, from that last major eruption. At this point, um, it's also worth saying we've got these different layers down here. Now, you might want to turn on, um, kind of play around with turning on these, but I, I generally have as few on as possible so that it um, make, means the map can load more quickly. Um, but I do want the roads on and I do want the places on so I can get a kind of sense of where the main kind of human populations are. Um, right, so now we've got a kind of hang of some of the different features. We want to plot our volcano. So for this, I click on this place marker link at the top. Um, now, once this window here is open, I can move this wherever I like. As soon as I close it, I can't move that anymore. It's now fixed. If I want to open it again, I go down to here, my places link, I right click, I go on to get info, it opens the window again, and I can move it and I can edit it. Right, so I want to call this Mount Pinatubo. Okay, so I've got that. I've got the GPS here. We can we can use we can use that for some other kind of mapping and some other software. And later on, I can change the size of that um, if I want to. If it's the size of writing, I can change how it looks at it. But the really the key thing is here. So if I want to make the tools bigger. The icon's bigger, so I can see them from a oh, 40 is probably a little bit bigger. Seeing from a wider scale, I can do this so as well. Um, you've got we have got bot landslides, you have got earthquakes, we've got these hazards, we've got fires, so you can kind of play around with some weather ones with kind of what you think is most appropriate rain for these different um aspects. We're gonna have a go at mapping. But I've got my volcano right now. I want to add my details for it because I've filled in the research table already, makes my life a bit easier. I can just highlight all of that. Oh. Hit copy, control C. Hit paste. Great, I've got that. If I've got a, if I've saved the web link, I can copy and paste that into it as well. Um, which just makes my life a bit easier when I come to kind of understanding this. Hit OK, great. Fine. So there I've got my volcano. Now I can also add on some of the secondary hazards so I can sort of get a sense of what happened here. I've got some options up here. I've got um, a polygon. So if I want to shade an area, I can open up that. So let's think if we think about like the uh, pyroclastic flow. Um, I can start drawing this. Now with the window open, I can draw the pyroclastic flow. Now I know and I'll show you where I got this data from. The pyroclastic flow predominantly came out to this northeast. Um, sorry, northwest of the volcano. And destroyed this everything within this kind of window here. Um, so now I've finished that. I can uh, I can make it sort of semi opaque, translucent, so I can sort of see through it. I can change the color. So it's about pyroclastic flow, maybe kind of grey for our ash. Um, all that's the outside. I want to change the fill as well. Put that, and I want to make that fifty percent. And I don't really need to put any description on there. I hit OK, and that now that now stays. Now maybe that color wasn't the best choice because it's a bit hard to see. So I want to go if I right click back on that, or I go onto the option in the places, hit Get Info. I can edit it again. So actually, I've decided I want to make that. Um, much more visible. So I'm going to have that as being yellow. And I'm going to have 100% opaque so I can see it really clearly. And that's now much, much, much clearer to see um, the area affected by the pyroclastic flow. If I want to do the lava, I've got another option here. I can do a pathway. So we can see this kind of, um, this will be rather than covering an area, just a path. So the lava traveled down direction to the south. Again, I'm just left clicking here to draw my pathway in. I decide that's a better way to do it. I can change the width of that to make it wider so it's more easy to see. I can change the color. Um, I can label it as uh, Blaha. Click OK. And now I've got my Mount Pinatubu. 
I've got my details about it and the links. And I've got my two webs. If I just if, if I wanted to, I could add the, add some information about the pyroclastic flow, so that I could kind of see you know, the area it was affected or the speed it travelled, and and likewise for the lahas. Um, so now I've got my data on just um, where I got that from, and this is where the kind of research comes in. Um, this link here had a map, so I can see here using this key pyroclastic flows made to the northwest. And then the Lahars, well, they were sort of more spread out. Actually, we went a lots of different ways, followed these rivers. Um, so actually, in fact, I could maybe I should be adding on one um, traveling to the northeast there as well, uh, into that densely po more densely populated area. Okay, so that's how we get data done. Um, next, maybe I want to add on the path of. Type in Hyann. Again, I'm going to need to do some research on this, try and get more specific, um, maybe try and find a map that you can kind of copy. But to this, I happen to know that it, the, the storm started. Why is this storm icon Not that bigger? I can see it. It's a bit big. Cool. I'm on the Pacific. Could add in the date, um, which is that. I can add in my details there. Great, I've got that on there. Now, I can, if I want to add in the pathway of the hurricane, again, I can use this um, line tool. I'm going to decide that actually this one I want. Dark blue is probably not going to show, so I'm going to press purple. Hit OK. And I can draw on my path. That's not, not really right because it's went up so I can just move that. Hit the Philippines and came up to China. Again, very roughly drawn there. Hit OK and I've got my hurricane on my path. I can add on the impacts in here, the web links, all the rest of it. So that I can kind of use that. Um, if I want to, I can see that that um, 2,000 miles, like, so I can kind of get some sense of scale from that. Likewise, I could look at the, the area of the progress that flows affected, although as we're estimating these, it's not going to be absolutely precise. But what I have got now is I can start to get a sense of, okay, well, this Philippines is definitely going to be affected by at least two of these hazards. Okay, well, I hope that's been a useful um, guide for some of the features of using Google Earth. I hope that you guys can have a go at that as well. I really look forward to seeing um, both your research tables and, and what we can produce. Oh, I should just say, um, once I've made these layers, I want to make, just make sure that they are all in the folder. So that when I hit, I can just minimize that. Yeah, they're all there now. Before I log off, I just want to press save as. So it doesn't have the hotspots. Replace all already done. Great. And I can now close close Google Earth. No, but it's there on my desktop if I want to open it again. Fantastic. Well, yeah, as I say, look forward to seeing what you guys can produce.